Okay guys, hey and welcome to another training for the Raspberry Pi using the Weaved application. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be checking out how to send the push notifications, which is uh, that piece of the puzzle that we did on the Christmas video. Uh, it's how we notified when Santa was around. So we'll be taking a look at that code that I used as well as just generic easy way to send a push notification using the command line interface so i apologize for not getting the video out as soon as possible um i actually have been sick for the past couple of days and just now feeling better got me something to sip on so uh, if my voice gets to scratching or doing something funny uh i'll be taking a sip here and there so Please forgive the pauses every now and then as I do that. So, okay, let's get going. I've gone ahead and SSH'd into our Raspberry Pi here. And what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, I'll, first of all, I'll show you where this uh, stuff can be found. Now, I am still operating on the last uh, uh, weaved software that I downloaded uh, back at Christmas time. I don't know. I'd have to check. They could have up updated it by now. So um, there could be a fresh, fresh version of it with uh, other fixes and stuff in it. But I'm going to go over um, one bug that I found. Um, it's really not that big of a deal, but uh, it is there. So I'll let you guys know what that is. And they assured me that they were going to fix it in their next uh, release. So that release may already be out. Um, for their software to download, so we can check that out. Anyway, I can probably put a link in the description or something for that, so anyway, where this actually is located is you have to be, we're gonna switch users to root because it's in root the root directory, so we're gonna sudo switch user to root. All right, there we go. So now, if you cd to root slash dot weaved slash core, you'll see that there is, we do an LL, you'll see that there's a notification directory. So we're gonna go to that. Oops, I typed VI. Why would I do that? I don't know. Let's CD to it. Okay, perform an LL. And there's the send notification uh, shell script that's there, as well as a the, the file named yo, which what that is, if you VI that, is that basically will show you kind of the syntax of how to call one of the notification scripts, and that's also in the user bin directory too. They've this uh, this shell script that actually does the notification sending. So this is basically the syntax. You put uh, basically your message payload in here, and then you send. It's just an OK, you know, acknowledgement, and that's basically that's basically the syntax what you do. So it's actually really easy. Um, so let's let's log out a root here. Back out of that. By the way, if you don't know what I just did there, I, I used uh, Control D as in Delta, and that uh, that'll uh, log you out one level. So okay, so now if we cd to user bin, okay, and we ll for send because there's a lot of stuff uh, in here. So send star, you see that we have the send notification. So now if we type send notification sh we do a quote zero quote and we say hello world it's our typical response right now here is the spot that I found there's a little bit of a bug for some reason you aren't able to put uh, spaces and but they said they were aware of that we've said they were aware of that and that they were going to jump on it and fix it in the next uh, uh, revision of their software that you download and install. So I'm sure that probably uh, at least by now, uh, if not very soon, uh, that sh should be resolved. So um, you guys can go check check for that new uh, update and see if it's uh, if uh, that has been corrected. But simple fix is you just put dashes or uh, underscores. Not a big deal at all. So. We're gonna do the oops, the OK. I think it's lowercase. I don't know if lower and upper really matters, but anyway, try it with the OK, and hit go, and you'll see it basically do exactly what I showed you in that Christmas video. 
and if I wait a little bit, I don't know if you guys heard that. I've got my I've got my iPad sitting next to the microphone here. Hopefully you you heard the doodling, but I just uh, received it on my uh, uh, on my iPad. So it does work. It does send out. So now if we want to take a look at that code that I had when it sent the the push notification based on the uh, uh, motion sensor that you saw in the video. So where that was at was um, I had that weaved weave directory. Let me just CD back to tilde, which is uh, my home directory. If you look at it, it's the home slash pi directory is where that's at. Inside here, I have this web IO pi folder that I made. So if we CD to that, then inside there, you see that we have the, the detect, um, basically a little C, C code file that we have. So let's, uh, let's vim the detect dot C. Oh yeah, yeah, I have it open. I had it open on another window uh, previously. There we go. All right, so now we're in there. And what I've done is I included the BCM28 35.h header file you know I'm basically using the if you guys checked out that uh, video I have on controlling the GPIO with a uh, with a C code um, that's basically what I'm doing here it's the exact same method so including that including SDDIO including the time and all that jazz so I can timestamp when this stuff goes out and then what I've done is I create basically a time uh, structure and whatnot to store the current time in and all that jazz. Set up the GPIO, um, select, and I uh, select my pin that I'm using, which the pin that we're using is GPIO uh, header 1 uh, pin 10, or at least GPIO 10. <coughs> Excuse me. And so what we're going to do is we'll set that up as an input pin. That's basically the pin that uh, the uh, motion sensor is on. And then we're also going to go and we're going to turn the the pull up down, you know, we're going to turn that off completely. It's not going to be pulled up or down. It's just going to float it because that's what we want. Um, since the, uh, the, whatever it is, the sensor will pull it up or down based on whether it sees movement or not. Then what we do is enter our while loop. So I'm just saying while one, and that way it'll it'll just loop forever. And then if basically the GPIO level um, is a one, is what we're doing here, we're going to send out the page. Now this is where we're gonna invoke the system command, which uh, comes from the STDIO uh, header file, if I remember right. And what, we're, what you can do is when you invoke the system command, you put in quotes, um, any shell command, you know, any command line, you know, command you want to type in, you uh, you just put in quotes inside the parentheses of the system command, and it will run that, just like if you uh, typed it in the command line. So what we're doing is we're running sh for shell. There's our user bin, send notification. So there's the send notification script, okay? And then there's our zero. Now, if those of you that might be confused at this, but uh, in C, and well, pretty much, most programming languages, um, you have to use some sort of, if you want to use a quote as part of the quoted text, I guess you'd say, um, since the uh, parameter inside this guy has to be encased in, in quotes here. Um, if you want a quote as part of the parameter, you know, you have to use the escape character quote, so it's a backslash quote. Otherwise, when you type just a quote by itself, the system function is thinking that, like if this was just a single quote, it's thinking that, you know, this is the other quote for this quote. So it's thinking this is the system command and it'll give you an error on this other stuff because it won't know, it, it thinks you're trying to just ram some kind of, of gunk onto the end of the command and so it won't understand. So what you need to do, at least the compiler, sorry, the compiler won't understand. So as you use the backslash quote, you know, because remember our command that we, we typed was, um, you call it back up here real quick. Uh, where is that? Send notification. Remember, we have the quote, zero quote, and then our our, our payload or our data that we want to send in uh, quotes, and then the OK is in quotes. So for us to be able to 
do that here programmatically inside of a command, you have to use those backslash characters. So that's that's what's going on right here. So we've got our zero, and then we've got Santa's here <laughs> in the uh, backslash quotes and the escape character quotes. And then we also have the okay in backslash quote, backslash quote. And then we have one final quote to match the quote here at the beginning for the system command. And then uh, the matching uh, parentheses. Then that will send out, we'll actually go ahead and do the, the paging as well as then there's the raw time here. And uh, what this does is that's the, the, the time function calls the raw time, stores it in that variable raw time or class raw time and then time info equals and then local time raw time and all that jazz and then it prints all of that stuff. So that's what it's doing here, this percent %s, that string is it's grabbing the uh, time and basically time stamping this is all it's doing and printing it to the terminal. <coughs> Excuse me, so you can see what time it detected Santa Claus. And then um, what we do is so that we don't get the port basically flapping because the minute this thing recombines, you know, or basically as long as it sees movement, you know, it's going to hold that pin high. Well, that way it's not just, it's just looping as fast as it can loop and sending out just page after page after page after page. You put this while um, the GPIO pin is high, statement in with just a, uh, just a semicolon. And what that'll do is this whole uh, program will basically halt and stick right here in an infinite while loop, um, waiting for that pin to go back low. So while that pin's high, it, since we basically sent out the message here, we wait for the pin to go low. And then once it goes low, then we continue on with the program, which what's left of the program is just a delay for a little bit and then um, loop right back to the top and start looping and checking uh, for this every basically 100 milliseconds is what it's gonna do. It's gonna check that GPIO pin every 100 milliseconds to see if it uh, changes state. And that's pretty much it. We close out our, our BCM uh, 2835 and we return zero uh, when, uh, upon an exit. So pretty pretty easy, pretty straightforward. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's a, the simplest way uh, I found to send a push notification. Um, I think, if I remember right, I think I still have this hooked up. We could give it a shot again. Uh, drone detect. Pseudo it here. Oops, just went out. <laughs> it sent one. Uh, I think I, I think I moved. I think my sensors pointed at me. Let me let me move over to the bench and flag my hand in front of it. And see what happens. Oh, actually, it isn't hooked up anymore. I actually got uh, some wires. Uh, I had to steal some wires for some other things I was doing, so it actually isn't hooked up anymore. But if you want to see the motion sensor part of it work, you can check out the Christmas video. But this has been a real short video um, this time. I just uh, wanted to show you guys how to send those push notifications because it seems like it'd be real complicated, but it actually is not. Go ahead and go back up to the uh, detect code. This code also, I believe I zipped up everything. This this included um, in the Christmas time uh, video. So there should be, I think, some code on the project code link that's called uh, Christmas special or something like that that's there and uh, you can click on that, download the zip and it has everything in it. So you can pop open the source code and take a look at it if you haven't already. <laughs> well guys, anyway, like I said, I think that's pretty much all I had for you this time was just the uh, the simple uh, way of sending out a push notification and how to basically tie it to a GPIO pin or something, you know, whether it be a button press or a uh, you know, like I, like in my case, a motion sensor uh, detecting something. You can just run uh, basically this simple script, put in what GPIOs you want, and you could even call this. You know, call this multiple times. This this push notification uh, system command. You could call this multiple times with a different message in it. You know, for different uh, GPIO buttons. You know, even. You know, so if you know one sensor sees something or another sensor sees something else or a certain temperature is reached or a certain 
water level is reached or something like that. Send push notifications of all kinds, you know. So basically, that's in a nutshell how it works. Okay, guys, take care. Like, subscribe, share, check me out on Instructables. Follow me on Twitter, all that fun jazz. Thumb up the video if you like it. That really does help the channel because don't know if you guys know, but when you thumb up videos and things like that to any YouTuber, it actually helps them. The more thumbs up they get and uh, you know likes and whatnot they get, the it'll help in when people search for something on topic. If your video has a lot of likes, it will actually bring it to the forefront of the search um, faster. So that always helps. Thanks guys for watching. Take care. And we'll see you next time.